Hey, robot students, here we go. We're going to talk today specifically Vuforia, TensorFlow, same, different, what's going on, and how to get started with this stuff. This is some of the most critical stuff that's coming up. This separates a medium team from an excellent team, and this is programming at one of the higher levels that we're going to do, and it can really give you a step up and separate you and give you something to show off going to college or in a portfolio, whatever you're programming and looking at. So here we go. Here we're going to start. All of this is on First's GitHub page, where if we were using the full Android Studio, we'd download and we'd have all this. And we've got blocks. So here we go. We are using, first of all, what is TensorFlow? This is TensorFlow. It's machine learning, meaning they took 10,000 pictures of a ring and fed them all into Google and said, if it looks like this, it's a ring. If they did the same with a stack of four rings and said, this is four rings. And then, so the algorithm begins to learn. This is what machine learning is, which machine learning is the very, very first step of AI. Okay. So I know what a stop sign is. You know what a stop sign is. And we can abstract that. We can look at a you know, a cartoon picture of a thing that's red with eight sides and we can look at a thing on the road and we know the different, we know they're the same. Computers are smart, dumb or dumb, smart, however you want to say it, because if it's not the exact same shape, size, hue, font, everything, it doesn't know that's the same stop sign until you start machine learning. All right. So that's where we're headed here. So, it is confident 93% that this is a stack of rings. Quad, so stack of four rings. It is 93% confident that this is a single stack of rings. All right. Here we go. If, so if we were live, they would hit randomize or they would literally roll dice. If it rolls a one or a four, you put no rings down. Here you go. If you roll something else, you put one ring down or four rings down. That determines where you should drop the wobble goal in autonomous. This does work for future years, okay? Don't just ignore that this is an old season if you're seeing this in the future. Knowing, visually seeing something on the field and then reacting to that by the robot in autonomous has come up. It's big. It's part of the programming for years, okay? Our phones are compatible. We're going to look at a sample op mode. If you guys are going crazy, you can do custom inference. Like you can build your own and take your own pictures. And this TensorFlow can be used to identify regular things around. Okay, regular things. We're not using a custom model. We are using the blocks TensorFlow object detection example. Wait for it. Here we go. All right. We're going to open up the sample op mode. Use the sample content. Concept TensorFlow with webcam. If you're going in a future year, if you're back to using the phone instead of the expansion hub and the control hub in combination with the webcam, then if you're using the phone on the robot, you would need this to be just object flow detection minus the webcam there. All right. This is what it starts out like. All of this happens during initialization couple reasons for that. One, it eases up the processing. And when you hit initialize, wait, wait, do not go ahead and hit start because if we scroll down here, we're looking through here, now right above here where it says, right above where this says wait for start, it actually spits out some telemetry after all the initialization is done. It says ready. Hit initialize, wait. It takes the processor a couple seconds to spool this stuff up. This is Vuforia. This is to initialize Vuforia. This is to initialize TensorFlow Vuforia. Both those are initialized. They are not started yet. This just says you had to scan the phone to get the webcam in. You can use extended tracking and turn this to axes right here on the monitor feedback. This is where the camera is on the robot, X, Y, Z, location on the robot and rotation. All right. Those are important. If you're doing navigation, you can create an offset because if you move the camera, you don't want to have to redo all your programming steps. TensorFlow, minimum confidence to recognize something that's 70%. All 
All right. So right here, initialize call TensorFlow activate. That turns on TensorFlow. We set a zoom. That's a digital zoom for the webcam. Anything more than two feet, that might be interesting. You should look at that. Okay. So it's saying what it does. If you want to use Vuforia to look at the pictures, the targets on the wall for navigation, you would also have to activate Vuforia. This is the initialize. This just gives it the parameters. It is not active. This is the initialize. It is not active. Here we activate TensorFlow. Later, you should deactivate TensorFlow. It is very processor in, um, intensive. Same thing with Vuforia. If you activate it, you need to deactivate it before you start running around. All right, so initialize, everything's good. Um, you could do both right here. You could do both Euphoria and TensorFlow. All right, um, here we go. This is what you're going to see. This would be nice if you could actually view what's going on. First of all, this is what the computer sees. This is 97% confidence that it is a stack of four. You put, this is measured in pixels, zero, zero here. X goes positive this way. Y goes positive this way. It will give you the coordinates of the ring stack most years or whatever is um, appropriate for your given year. So if it's going to give you coordinates right here, the top bound and the boundaries of the box, okay, that's what it can report back to you. We've activated TensorFlow. We've set the zoom factor. If you set the zoom factor, this is what the camera is actually looking at. How do we get this? How do we get this? This is actually important to make sure you can see what the robot's seeing so it, you can get the camera angled and everything set up right. You set your zoom factor. On the driver station, the three dots in the top right expand that. There's actually one that says camera stream. You have to initialize the program, do the camera stream, look at this, stop the program and make your adjustments and then go back. You can't run the program with the camera stream open. All right. What the automatic program was set up to do for this year with ultimate goal. Okay. While the op mode is active. So it all throughout autonomous start looping, set recognitions. That's a variable, but that is not a number variable recognitions, plural, is a list. It's a list of things because it's going to be an object and a bounding box and it's all the things are put in one variable. If it sees nothing, then say no items detected. Else, we're going to start looping here. For everything, for each item in the long list of items, singular, plural, two different variables, be careful there. For each thing in this long list, start putting them in that list, okay? Now, here's the way you do it. Every year, the sample that they FTC provides is going to give you the entry point. All right, we're going to wrap up here. Here's the entry point. They tell you to modify this. Hey, no items detected. So what do you want to do? You want to go to target zone A. And then down here in this list where it was making the big long list and what's in the list, if the recognition label, it says single, then you want to go to B. And if it says quad, you want to go to C. And else it's going to say unknown. So right here where you added C, B, and up here in a separate spot where you added A, because sometimes not detecting something, they have to separate that from detecting one and four. All right, it's a different kind of thing. Did you see nothing? And then, or did you see something? And then tell me about that something. That's the way it's separated this year. What you're going to do is you're going to come in here and you're probably going to create a function. Go do something else. So you're going to put all, or you can just put it right in here. You can put all your commands right here. Go to B, go to C, go to A, whatever your commands are. The other thing you're probably going to want to do, um, the rest of this is about image orientation. If um, you're using a phone, if you've got it in portrait mode versus landscape mode, how you lock that out and where the top boundary is. 
here's the thing. This is going to keep looping and looking and looking and looking and looking. So as you drive up, all of a sudden, if you drive past the rings and it can't see the rings anymore, it thinks we're going somewhere else. You've got to make sure you exit your loops to get your instructions going smoothly or you put it inside a function and then you keep it everything inside that function and just hold it there for the, through the rest of autonomous holding it in that functions for the rest of autonomous is okay or closing all the loops deactivating tensorflow and then starting your driving after you've declared where you want to go that's an okay way method also i have one more point um it's starting to elude me. Deactivate this. Get your processing. Oh, when? I think one of our new tricks we're going to start to do. This is really important. Do this during initialize. When you hit initialize, then they actually randomize the field. You select your program. You hit initialize. Then they randomize the field and they wait. You should have this looking at the field then and see... If you can get it to detect so that when you hit play, it doesn't search then. It's already out of the loop. It's closed down. It's got its instructions. It's ready to go. That's a thought you need. All right. There are different ways to do this. Think about it. Let's learn. Have a great time. All right.